And now chapter 2 of the Anjalila, the chastisement of Junior Haridas. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master and of all the other preceptors on the path of devotional service. I offer my respectful obeisances unto all the Vaishnavas and unto the six Goswamis, including Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatan Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, Jiva Goswami, and their associates. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Sri Advaita Acharya Prabhu, Sri Nityananda Prabhu, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and all his devotees headed by Sri Vas Thakur. I then offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, Sri Mati Radharani, and all the gopis headed by Lalita and Vishaka. All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Nityananda Prabhu. All glories to Advaita Charya and all glories to all the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In His incarnation as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Sri Krishna descended to deliver all the living beings in the three worlds, from Brahmaloka down to Patalaloka. He caused their deliverance in three ways. The Lord delivered the fallen souls in some places by meeting them directly, in other places by empowering a pure devotee, and in still other places by appearing before someone himself. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu delivered almost all the fallen souls by directly meeting them. He delivered others by entering the body of Nakula Brahmachari and by appearing before Nishringananda Brahmachari. I shall deliver the fallen souls. This statement characterizes the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was personally present, anyone in the world who met him even once was fully satisfied and became spiritually advanced. Every year devotees from Bengal would go to Jagannath Puri to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and after meeting they would return to Bengal. Similarly, People who went to Jagannath Puri from various provinces of India were fully satisfied after seeing the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Peepers, including the seven islands, the nine Khandas, the planets of the demigods, Gandharva Loka and Kinara Loka, would go there in the forms of human beings. Having seen the Lord, they all became Vaishnavas. Thus they danced and chanted the Hare Krishna mantra in ecstatic love of Godhead. Thus by direct meetings, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu delivered the three worlds. Some people, however, could not go and were entangled in material activities. To deliver people in regions throughout the universe who could not meet him, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally entered the bodies of pure devotees. Thus he empowered living beings, his pure devotees, by manifesting in them so much of his own devotion that people in all other countries became devotees by seeing them. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu delivered the entire three worlds, not only by his personal presence, but also by empowering others. I shall briefly describe how he empowered a living being in Bengal.
in Ambuya Muluka, there was a person named Nakula Brahmachari, who was a perfectly pure devotee, greatly advanced in devotional service. Desiring to deliver all the people of Bengal, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered the heart of Nakula Brahmachari. Nakula Brahmachari became exactly like a man haunted by a ghost. Thus he sometimes laughed, sometimes cried, sometimes danced, and sometimes chanted like a madman. He continuously exhibited bodily transformations of transcendental love. Thus he cried, trembled, became stunned, perspired, danced in love of Godhead, and made sounds like those of a cloud. His body shone with the same luster as that of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he showed the same absorption in ecstatic love of Godhead. People came from all provinces of Bengal to see these symptoms. He advised whomever he met to chant the holy names Hare Krishna. Thus, upon seeing him, people were overwhelmed with love of Godhead. When Shivananda Sain heard that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had entered the body of Nakula Brahmachari, he went there with doubts in his mind. Desiring to test the authenticity of Nakula Brahmachari, he stayed outside thinking as follows. If Nakula Brahmachari personally calls me and knows my worshipable mantra, then I shall understand that he is inspired by the presence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thinking in this way, he stayed some distance apart. There was a large crowd of people, some coming and some going. Indeed, some people in that great crowd could not even see Nakula Brahmachari. In his inspired state, Nakula Brahmachari said, Shivananda Sain is staying some distance away. Two or four of you, go call him. Thus people began running here and there, calling in all directions, Shivananda, whoever is Shivananda, please come. Nakula Brahmachari is calling you. Hearing these calls, Shivananda Sain quickly went there, offered obeisances to Nakula Brahmachari, and sat down near him. Nakula Brahmachari said, I know that you are doubtful. Now please hear this evidence with great attention. You are chanting the Goda Gopal Mantra, composed of four syllables. Now please give up the doubts that have resided in you. Shivananda Sain thereupon developed full confidence in his mind that Nakula Brahmachari was filled with the presence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Shivananda Sain then offered him respect and devotional service. In this way, one should understand the inconceivable potencies of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now please hear how his appearance takes place. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu always appeared in four places. In the household temple of Mother Shachi, in the places where Sri Nityananda Prabhu danced, in the house of Srivas Pandit during congregational chanting, and in the house of Raghava Pandit. He appeared because of his attraction to the love of his devotees. That is his natural characteristic. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared before Nishringananda Brahmachari and ate his offerings. Please hear about this with attention. Shivananda Sain had a nephew named Srikanta Sain, who by the grace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was extremely fortunate. One year Srikanta Sain came alone to Jagannath Puri in great eagerness to see the Lord. Seeing Sri Kanta Sain, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed causeless mercy upon him. Sri Kanta Sain stayed near Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for about two months at Jagannath Puri. When he was about to return to Bengal, the Lord told him, Forbid the devotees of Bengal to come to Jagannath Puri this year. This year I shall personally go to Bengal and meet all the devotees there, headed by Advaita Charya. Please inform Shivananda Sain that this December I shall certainly go to his home. Jagadananda is there, and he will give me offerings of food. Inform them all that no one should come to Jagannath Puri this year. 
when Sri Kanta Sain returned to Bengal and delivered this message, the minds of all the devotees were very pleased. Advaita Charya was just about to go to Jagannath Puri with the other devotees, but upon hearing this message, he waited. Shivananda Sain and Jagadananda also stayed back, awaiting the arrival of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When the month of Posha arrived, both Jagadananda and Shivananda collected all kinds of paraphernalia for the Lord's reception. Every day they would wait until evening for the Lord to come. As the month passed, but Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not come, Jagadananda and Shivananda became most unhappy. Suddenly, Nusringananda arrived, and Jagadananda and Shivananda arranged for him to sit near them. Seeing them both so unhappy, Nusringananda inquired, Why do I see that you are both despondent? Then Shivananda Sain told him, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu promised that he would come. Why then has he not arrived? Hearing this, Nishringa Brahmachari replied, Please be satisfied. I assure you that I shall bring him here three days from now. Shivananda and Jagadananda knew of Nishringananda Brahmachari's influence and love of Godhead. Therefore, they now felt assured that he would certainly bring Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His real name was Pradyumna Brahmachari. The name Nishringananda had been given to him by Lord Godasundara himself. After meditating for two days, Nishringananda Brahmachari told Shivananda Sain, I have already brought Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to the village known as Panihati. Tomorrow at noon he will come to your home. Therefore please bring all kinds of cooking ingredients. I shall personally cook and offer him food. In this way I shall bring him here very soon. Be assured that I am telling you the truth. Please do not be doubtful. Bring all the ingredients very soon, for I want to begin cooking immediately. Please do what I say. Nishingananda Brahmachari said to Shivananda, Please bring whatever cooking ingredients I want. Thus Shivananda Sain immediately brought whatever he asked for. Beginning early in the morning, Nishingananda Brahmachari cooked many varieties of food, including vegetables, cakes, sweet rice, and other preparations. After he finished cooking, he brought separate dishes for Jagannath and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He also separately offered dishes to Nishingadev, his worshipable deity. Thus he divided all the food into three offerings. Then, outside the temple, he began to meditate upon the Lord. In his meditation, he saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu quickly come, sit down, and eat all three offerings, leaving behind no remnants. Pradyumna Brahmachari was overwhelmed by transcendental ecstasy upon seeing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu eating everything. Thus tears flowed from his eyes. Nevertheless, he expressed dismay, saying, Alas, alas, my dear Lord, what are you doing? You are eating everyone's food. My dear Lord, you are one with Jagannath. Therefore, I have no objection to your eating his offering. But why are you touching the offering to Lord Nishingadev? I think that Nishingadev could not eat anything today, and therefore he is fasting. If the master fasts, how can the servant live? Although Nishinga Brahmachari felt jubilation within his heart to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu eating everything, for the sake of Lord Nishingadev, he externally expressed disappointment. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. Therefore, there is no difference between Him, Lord Jagannath, and Lord Nishingadev. Pradyumna Brahmachari was deeply eager to understand this fact. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed it to him by a practical demonstration. After eating all the offerings, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started for Panihati. There he was greatly satisfied to see the different varieties of vegetables prepared in the house of Raghava. Shivananda said to Nishingananda, Why are you expressing dismay? Nishingananda replied, just see the behavior of your Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
He alone has eaten the offerings of all three deities. Because of this, both Jagannath and the Sringadev remained fasting. When Shivananda Sain heard this statement, he was unsure whether Nishringananda Brahmachari was speaking that way because of ecstatic love or because it was actually a fact. When Shivananda Sain was thus perplexed, Nishringananda Brahmachari said to him, Bring more food, let me cook again for Lord Nishringadev. Then Shivananda Sain again brought the ingredients with which to cook and Pradyumna Brahmachari again cooked and offered the food to Nishringadev. The next year Shivananda went to Jagannath Puri with all the other devotees to see the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One day, in the presence of all the devotees, the Lord raised these topics concerning Nishringananda Brahmachari and praised his transcendental qualities. The Lord said, Last year in the month of Posha, when Nishringananda gave me varieties of sweetmeats and vegetables to eat, they were so good that I had never before eaten such preparations. Hearing this, all the devotees were struck with wonder and Shivananda became confident that the incident was true. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to eat at the temple of Shachimata every day and also visit the house of Srivas Thakur when Kirtan was performed. Similarly, he was always present when Nityananda Prabhu danced and he regularly appeared at the house of Raghava. Lord Godasundara is greatly influenced by the love of his devotees. Therefore, wherever there is pure devotion to the Lord, the Lord Himself, subdued by such love, appears and His devotees see Him. Influenced by the loving affairs of Shivananda Sain, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came again and again. Therefore, who can estimate the limits of His love? Thus I have described the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Anyone who hears about these incidents can understand the transcendental opulence of the Lord. At Jagannath Puri, in the association of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, lived Bhagavan Acharya, who was certainly a gentleman, a learned scholar, and a great devotee. He was fully absorbed in thoughts of fraternal relationships with God. He was an incarnation of a cowherd boy, and thus his dealings with Svarup Damodar Goswami were very friendly. He sought the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with full surrender. Sometimes he would invite the Lord to dine at his home. Bhagavan Acharya prepared varieties of rice and vegetables at home and brought the Lord there alone to eat. Bhagavan Acharya's father, whose name was Shadananda Khan, was an expert statesman, whereas Bhagavan Acharya was not at all interested in the management of the state. Indeed, he was almost in the renounced order of life. Bhagavan Acharya's brother, whose name was Gopal Bhattacharya, had studied Vedanta philosophy at Benares and had then returned to Bhagavan Acharya's home. Bhagavan Acharya took his brother to meet Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but the Lord, knowing that Gopal Bhattacharya was a Mayabadi philosopher, could not get much happiness from meeting him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu derives no happiness from meeting one who is not a pure devotee of Krishna. Thus, because Gopal Bhattacharya was a Mayavadi scholar, the Lord felt no jubilation in meeting him. Nevertheless, because Gopal Bhattacharya was related to Bhagavan Acharya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu feigned pleasure in seeing him. Bhagavan Acharya said to Svarup Damodar, Gopal, my younger brother, has returned to my home, having concluded his study of Vedanta philosophy. Bhagavan Acharya requested Svarup Damodar to hear from Gopal the commentary upon Vedanta. Svarup Damodar Goswami, however, somewhat angry because of love, spoke as follows. 
You have lost your intelligence in the association of Gopal, and therefore you are eager to hear the Mayavad philosophy. When a Vaishnav listens to the Sharidaka Basya, the Mayavad commentary upon Vedanta Sutra, he gives up the Krishna conscious attitude that the Lord is the master and the living entity is his servant. Instead, he considers himself the Supreme Lord. The Mayavad philosophy presents such a jugglery of words that even a highly elevated devotee who has accepted Krishna as his life and soul changes his decision when he reads the Mayavad commentary on Vedanta Sutra. In spite of Svarup Damada's protest, Bhagavan Acharya continued, We are all fixed at the lotus feet of Krishna with our hearts and souls. Therefore, the Sharidak Vasya cannot change our minds. Svarup Damada replied, Nevertheless, when we hear the Mayavad philosophy, we hear that Brahman is knowledge and that the universe of Maya is false, but we gain no spiritual understanding. The Mayavadi philosopher tries to establish that the living entity is only imaginary and that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is under the influence of Maya. Hearing this kind of commentary breaks the heart and life of a devotee. Thus Bhagavan Acharya, greatly ashamed and fearful, remained silent. The next day he asked Gopal Bhattacharya to return to his own district. One day Bhagavan Acharya invited Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to dine at his home. Thus he was preparing rice and various types of vegetables. A devotee named Chota Haridas used to sing for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Bhagavan Acharya called him to his home and spoke as follows. Please go to this sister of Shiki Mahiti. In my name ask her for a mana of white rice and bring it here. Shiki Mahiti's sister was named Madhavi Devi. She was an elderly lady who always performed austerities. She was very advanced in devotional service. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted her as having formerly been an associate of Srimati Radharani. In the entire world, three and a half people were his intimate devotees. The three were Svarup Damada Goswami, Ramananda Roy, and Shiki Mahiti, and the half a person was Shiki Mahiti's sister. After begging the rice from her, Junya Haridas brought it to Bhagavan Acharya, who was very pleased to see its quality. In great affection, Bhagavan Acharya cooked varieties of vegetables and other preparations dear to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He also obtained remnants of food from Lord Jagannath and digestive aids such as ground ginger and also lime with salt. At noon, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to eat the offerings of Bhagavan Acharya, he first appreciated the fine rice and therefore questioned him. Where did you get such fine rice? the Lord asked. Bhagavan Acharya replied, I got it by begging from Madhavi Devi. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked who had begged the rice and brought it back, Bhagavan Acharya mentioned the name of Junya Haridas. Praising the quality of the rice, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu partook of the prasad. Then, after returning to his residence, he gave the following order to Govinda, his personal assistant. From this day forward, do not allow Chota Haridas to come here. When Junya Haridas heard that he had been ordered not to approach Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was very unhappy. No one could understand why he had been ordered not to come. Haridas fasted continuously for three days. Then Svarup Damada Goswami and other confidential devotees approached Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to inquire from him. What great offense has Junya Haridas committed? Why has he been forbidden to come to your door? He has now been fasting for three days. The Lord replied, I cannot tolerate seeing the face of a person who has accepted the renounced order of life, but who still talks intimately with a woman. So strongly do the senses adhere to the objects of their enjoyment, that indeed a wooden statue of a woman attracts the mind of even great saintly persons. As it says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, one should not sit closely with one's mother, sister or daughter, for the senses are so strong 
that they may attract even a person advanced in knowledge. There are many persons with little in their possession who accept the renounced order of life, like monkeys. They go here and there engaging in sense gratification and speaking intimately with women. After saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered his room. Seeing him in such an angry mood, all the devotees fell silent. The next day, all the devotees together approached the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to submit an appeal on behalf of Junya Haridas. They said, Haridas has committed a small offense. Therefore, O Lord, please be merciful to him. Now he has received a sufficient lesson. In the future, he will not commit such an offense. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, My mind is not under my control. It does not like to see anyone in the renounced order who talks intimately with women. You should all tend to your respective engagements. Give up this useless talk. If you speak this way again, I shall go away, and you will no longer see me here. Hearing this, all the devotees covered their ears with their hands, got up, and went about their respective duties. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also left that place to perform his noon duties. No one could understand his pastimes. The next day, all the devotees went to Sri Parmananda Puri and requested him to pacify the Lord. Parmananda Puri thereupon went alone to the residence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Lord, after offering him obeisances, seated him by his side with great respect. The Lord inquired, What is your order? For what purpose have you come here? Parmananda Puri then submitted his prayer that the Lord show favor to Junya Haridas. Hearing this statement, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, My dear Lord, please hear me. It is better for you to stay here with all the Vaishnavs. Please give me permission to go to Alalanath. I shall remain there alone. Only Govinda will go with me. After saying this, the Lord called for Govinda. Offering obeisances to Parmananda Puri, he got up and began to leave. In great haste, Parmananda Puri Goshani went before him and with great humility persuaded him to sit down in his own room. Parmananda Puri said, My dear Lord Chaitanya, you are the independent personality of Godhead. You can do whatever you like. Who can say anything above you? All your activities are for the benefit of people in general. We cannot understand them, for your intentions are very deep and grave. After saying this, Paramananda Puri Goswami left for his own home. Then all the devotees went to see Junya Haridas. Swarup Damada Goswami said, Please hear us, Haridas, for we all wish you well. Please believe this. At present, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is persisting in his mood of anger because he is the independent Supreme Personality of Godhead. At some time, however, he will surely be merciful, for at heart he is very kind. The Lord is persisting, and if you also persist, his persistence will increase. It is better for you to bathe and take prasad. In due course, his anger will automatically subside. Having said this, Swarup Damana Goswani induced Haridas to bathe and take prasad. After thus reassuring him, he returned home. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to see Lord Jagannath in the temple, Haridas would stay a long distance away and see him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the ocean of mercy. Who can understand him? When he chastises his dear devotees, he certainly does so to re-establish the principles of religion or duty. After all the devotees saw this example, a mentality of fear grew among them. Therefore, they all stopped talking with women, even in dreams.
In this way, a complete year passed for Junior Haridas, but still there was not a sign of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy toward him. Thus, at the end of one night, Junior Haridas, after offering Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu his respectful obeisances, departed for Prayag without saying anything to anyone. Junya Haridas had conclusively decided to attain shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thus he entered deep into the water at Triveni, the confluence of the Ganges and Yamuna at Prayag, and in this way gave up his life. Immediately after committing suicide in this way, he went in his spiritual body to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and received the mercy of the Lord. However, he still remained invisible. In a spiritual body resembling that of a Gandharva, Junya Haridas, although invisible, would sing at night for Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to hear. No one but the Lord, however, knew of this. One day, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inquired from the devotees, Where is Haridas? Now you may bring him here. The devotees all replied, one night at the end of a full year, Junya Haridas got up and went away. No one knows where he has gone. While hearing the devotees lament, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was mildly smiling. Thus all the devotees were very astonished. One day, Jagadananda, Svarup, Govinda, Kashishvar, Shankar, Damodar, and Mukunda all went to bathe in the sea. They could hear Haridas singing from a distant place as if calling them in his original voice. No one could see him, but they could hear him singing in a sweet voice. Therefore all the devotees, headed by Govinda, made this guess. Haridas must have committed suicide by drinking poison, and because of this sinful act he has now become a Brahmin ghost. We cannot see his material form, but still we hear his sweet singing. Therefore he must have become a ghost. Svarup Damodar, however, protested, This is a false guess. Junior Haridas chanted the Hare Krishna mantra throughout his entire life and served the Supreme Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Moreover, he is dear to the Lord and has died in a holy place. Haridas cannot have been degraded. He must have attained liberation. This is a pastime of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You will all understand it later. A devotee returned to Navadvip from Prayag and told everyone the details of Junya Haridas's suicide. He explained how Junya Haridas had made his resolution and had thus entered the waters at the confluence of the Yamuna and Ganges. Hearing these details, Srivas Thakur and the other devotees were very surprised. At the end of the year, Shivananda Sen came to Jagannath Puri as usual, accompanied by the other devotees, and thus in great happiness met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Srivas Thakur inquired from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Where is Junya Haridas? The Lord replied, A person is sure to achieve the results of his fruitive activity. Then Srivas Thakur related the details of Haridasa's decision and his entering the waters at the confluence of the Ganges and Yamuna. When Sri heard these details, he smiled in a pleased mood and said, If with sensual intentions one looks at a woman, this is the only process of atonement. Then all the devotees, headed by Svarup Damodar Goswami, concluded that because Haridas had committed suicide at the confluence of the rivers Ganges and Yamuna, he must have ultimately attained shelter at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the son of Mother Shachi, performs his pastimes which greatly satisfy the ears and minds of pure devotees who hear about them. This incident manifests the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his teaching that a sannyasi should remain in the renounced order, and the deep attachment to him felt by his faithful devotees. 
It also demonstrates the glories of holy places and shows how the Lord accepts His faithful devotee. Thus the Lord fulfilled five or seven purposes by performing one pastime. The pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are like nectar, and they are deep like the ocean. People in general cannot understand them, but a sober devotee can. Please hear the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with faith and confidence. Do not argue, for arguments will produce a contrary result. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita following in their footsteps. This ends Chapter 2 of the Antyalila, the chastisement of Junya Haridas.